Hey, what's going on? Um, uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mark, and uh, I was uh, one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, if you are a ex, you know, Jehovah Witness, and you come across this video, uh, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you. Um, I know uh, I've seen a couple examples and stories and heard from different people uh, what their experiences was, and I could relate to a lot of them. There's a few, you know, people who feel like they don't want to touch nothing you know biblical or you know they may lose their faith in god you know because you've been duped you know i understand it i get it my story still leads me to jesus so um you know if you don't believe in god no more or you know you don't uh that's not your thing this video may not be for you but to the witness that is watching that's still in maybe somewhat mentally out or trying to figure out hey is this stuff you know true what everybody is saying you know trying to gain that courage even you know to dig a little deeper or even leave or even speak out against it because this was courage that I had to gain um, this video is for you if you're a witness you may feel terrified right now while you're watching this video the amount of fear that could be going through you i've experienced in a room by myself looking at a website outside of jw.org or watching a video with somebody speaking against uh, watchtower or you know a jehovah witness organization you're terrified you think you're enjoying the devil himself you know but you have to ask yourself this question and understand if you really believe in the creator if you really believe in god that you have that right don't let any man nobody tell you that you don't have the right to make sure that you are doing the right thing okay that's not biblical that's control it's a difference okay god wants you to know he wants you to know the truth yes read his word test his word test who claims to be that organization or that religion who claims to be his put them to the test okay um uh, i like to share scripture um turn to uh first john 4 1 and uh it says do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets have gone out into the world okay um this is the new testament okay this is what we're told to do Okay. Also, you need to consider another scripture as I'm not trying to get, you know, just totally uh, throw too many scriptures because that's not what, at least what this video is about. But um, I want you to check another one out before I get to my point. Another scripture is in the first testament. Okay. Deuteronomy 18:22. And it says, when a prophet speaketh in the name of Jehovah, if the thing follows not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which Jehovah have not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Once something don't come true, okay, uh, that's it. There's nothing else to talk about. Okay, it's no point of uh debating about it if it's not true that's it if it don't come to pass that's it i ask you to put that in your head put that in your mind okay now there are a ton of videos um a ton of uh 
<laughs> websites on the, on the internet uh, that exposes the religion for what it is. Okay, uh, you can go the biblical route, or you can go, um, <laughs> you know, just just by the the fruit of the organization. You know, like what's going on. You know how they handle things. Okay. Uh, what the uh, organization likes to call it is new light. I was always told, well, you know, it's been new light on the subject or the date in 1914. You know, this is new light that, hey, they changed it to the overlapping generation. You know, I'm like, what? Oh, you know, I didn't understand. I didn't care because I was born in it. And uh, hey, that's what it, hey, that's what it must be. I didn't pay attention. I didn't read no Bible. I didn't. I looked at the Watchtower just as much as everybody else. And, and, Hey, my mama said this and that and stuff, you know, I said, okay, cool. You know, I didn't double down on my research. Um, a lot of, a lot of us didn't, you know, we took it for what it was. Okay. And you may be the ones that take it for what it is. Okay. What is new light? Um, there's no profits that God said, okay, we'll give them a little bit of this prophecy and then let them figure it out on their own. That's, that's not happened. Okay. Uh, but let me show you another scripture. You could turn to 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into a angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if he ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works you know it's funny how this scripture ties in with the false apostles deceitful workers and it mentions the angel of light but we claim when scripture is you know not clear or a prophecy didn't come to pass that it changes to do light okay that's the light i remember when you read the bible and it talks about satan himself transforming himself into an angel of light whose end will be according to their works so when you think about religion as a whole i mean there's a lot of religion that goes off a work-based system uh, you know how much time I got you know uh, you know or, or you know you, you do works you know Jehovah's Witnesses believe they're earning salvation you know if you're not a baptized witness if you're not in the truth uh, if you're disfellowshipped and you don't hurry up and get back to the hall you won't have salvation okay uh, this is based off works and I'm going to just add another scripture because the goal was I kind of got beside myself. I don't necessarily have a format, but we'll turn to uh, Isaiah uh, 64, 6. But we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. OK, now this is Old Testament scripture. This was a, a different covenant before Jesus which I'm going to get into next. But our righteous acts are like filthy rags. So you, you know, if that declares righteousness because you have so many hours and field service time or, you know, you, hey, you go to the hall, your meeting attendance is great. Uh, you do your best not to sin, right? We're not perfect people. Everybody's sin. We was born in a sin. So that's that's it. That's all. We're born in a sin. You can't escape it. You know, we're going to be judged by our thoughts. So there's nobody out here who is not sinning. Uh, sin, however, is a serious thing. But if you're going off of your sin, OK, because every Jehovah Witness goes to that hall on their best behavior. You're just putting a sheet over a scratched up table when you go there 
if you're at home and you're cursing and you're doing this and you watch pornography or you, you know you're doing this don't nobody know they don't have to know how many people are in that situation where they're going their best behavior i'm guilty of it i went to the hall and hey brother how you doing but i want you to take like a uh, description take the scripture into heavy consideration filthy rags okay that's what that's what that's like a slap in the face to god to sit up here and say that hey I'm full of righteousness. I'm, I'm righteousness. I've been baptized. I'm a baptized Jehovah Witness. Let me ask you this question. If you was to go to God, you really believe that you would be able to bring this to eternal being and say, hey, I had uh, I was a regular pioneer. I was an elder. I went to Bethel. I stayed a virgin until I got married. I, uh, you know, confessed all my sins to the brothers and 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 now i'm ready to go into the new system into the new world well there's a problem there if our righteous acts are like filthy rags just because you changed or you stopped sinning a certain sin doesn't mean you haven't sinned you've broken the law you know if you murder somebody and you stop murdering if you break a law today and they will still come after you because just because it was a long time ago don't change nothing you still broke the law i thought about writing a disassociating letter but hey they're not worth it they have no power no jurisdiction over me they're not worth it i owe them no explanation at all yet i'll be called an apostate i'm just reading from the bible and I'm applying it to what's really going on. You have to go and you have to research and see how many false prophecy Charles T. Russell made. Once the first prophecy didn't come true, that's it. Game over. It ain't nothing else to talk about. There's no compromise in that. Imagine a prophet coming from to tell David uh, his consequences from committing murder and committing adultery. Imagine it. Well, I don't got everything just yet, but over time, when we get new light, uh, you should be able to figure out. No, 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 no. He had to get him a message because he was a prophet. He had an actual channel to God, to Jehovah. But we have to realize. And, and I'm going to get to this because my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share the gospel. The true gospel. Okay. Uh, religion has messed so much things up. It's messed everybody's way of thinking. I'm not here to argue with you if you're an atheist. I'm not here to argue with you if you don't believe in Jesus. I'm going to share this, but I will not. I'm not going to do it because I've, I'm, I'm, I'm believing well, I'm, I'm riding with Jesus 100 percent because that's what it boils down to. We're going to go to the New Testament where Jehovah's name is nowhere near in the Greek scriptures. The New Testament is about salvation. And I'm going to turn to Ephesians 2. 8 through 9 it says for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest anyone should boast boasting is like oh girl I got 60 hours yeah I got 50 hours yeah, yeah, man, I'm out there, man. I'm out there every day. I'm a pioneer, a regular pioneer. I, I've been, you know, I go to all my meetings. If I miss one meeting, I'll be back out in the world. That's just how much I need to get there. That's that's good. Camaraderie is great. If you have the right camaraderie and that's sharing the same faith, then preaching the word is exactly what you want to do. You want to share this gift of grace because that's really the good news. That's why Jesus said to himself, it is finished. That's it. 
if we still got to go out here and put in 70 80 hours a month what did he die for at what point is enough enough that's what you have to ask yourself if you're an 80 year old person you're still trying to get 70 hours a month when is enough enough is you is you trying to meet a quota or are you doing it because you enjoy it and you want people to be saved so this is not of us it's not of works it's a gift from god you have to accept the gift and have faith and accept it going back to second corinthians let's read the last sentence it says who ends will be according to their works bottom line Now, this is me speculating. And I'm going to just talk from my perspective. Like, if, if, if I were God, let's just say. I would say, look. What, what what happened to the common sense I gave you? You know, we're responsible, too. You could be misled all you want to. But at some point, you got to be like, hold on. Okay. Something ain't right. The problem is. And I will say with a lot of the world especially people looking for God is we underestimate Satan and when the Bible tells us the whole world is in his hand like that's the truth like he didn't really really twisted it up you know if you was, if I was the devil I would definitely mess it up to where you couldn't have no uh grace you mean tell me all you gotta do is believe and you saved? Oh, I'm gonna really mess that up. I'm gonna make you seem like it's harder than what it really is. No, but people boast and they talk about how good they are. They talk about how uh, unsinful they are and what they do right. And this person is that. That person is that. And you shouldn't do this. And you shouldn't do that. Our thoughts are sins. So when I look at you in your face. You're a wonderful person. How I know you not what you thinking in your head? I don't know you. I don't know that. We're all going to have to answer for it one day. And if you don't have a savior who is Jesus Christ, you will be in trouble. There's this whole purpose of everything. And, you know, Jehovah Witnesses have the concept that Jesus is the archangel. Nowhere in scripture. Only thing pertaining into Jesus is him using the voice of an archangel. And that's in 1 Thessalonians 4 6. And he also say with the trumpet of God. So which one is he? You undermine his deeds, you undermine his sacrifice. Who else was also an angel? Satan. Oh, okay. So he sent the same being. Who could have reneged on getting the job done to come down and die or the same being that has the right just like you have the right to research what if let me ask you this question let me ask you a serious question what if jesus failed what if if he was a created being what if he was like what if he took satan up on his offer what if he took what if he said yeah i want all the kingdoms of the earth he was tempted you know what if he had thrown that stone in the bread where would we be today if this was an angel so you take you discredit jehovah god you discredit the father because you you feel like hey he said he was going to give us salvation something he predicted in genesis and they prophesize about this and he sends an angel that can possibly fail that's what you're saying when you say that jesus is the archangel i feel like my heart my soul is telling me to talk about this stuff i got family in this organization that i feel could be in danger when it comes to their salvation uh i'm i'm, I'm looked at as crazy you know, uh, I'm going to probably more than likely be labeled an apostate for this, but it is what it is. 
hey, I'm riding with Jesus, the real Jesus of the Bible. So, so be it. Jesus said, if you, you know, if you love your mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. And hey, I got to let some of that family go. But some of them people who are around me, hey, I, I don't, you know, I want salvation. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, um, once you really read this Bible, you're going to see what you're in danger of. Uh, I'm not going to go too detail into that because I don't want to scare you away if you are a witness. Because if this your first time seeing this, then there's a lot to throw at you. Understanding the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles and the 144,000. There's so much that goes into this. And if you don't read your Bible, if you don't pray, if you don't really try to understand the basis overall of Christianity, because don't get me wrong, Christianity is corrupted. The church is corrupted. You know, going back from Constantine when when they hey, you brought pagan Rome into into real Bible truth. It's 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 a mess. I get it. As Jehovah Witnesses, you don't learn basic Christianity why you're called a Christian Christ not Jehovah we have to use the name of Jesus Christ because that's the name that was given to us to use Hebrews 1 5 to which of the angels did he ever say you are my son today I have begotten you and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. If you read Hebrews 1 through 14, it pretty much explains the difference between Jesus and the angels. You have to read that, though. You have to ponder on it. You know, we're taught, we're told to do the will of the father. You know what the will of the Father is? Yeah, I got to go to one more scripture. I got to bring one more up. I just want you to just use your Bible. I'm not bringing up nothing. I ain't said nothing about Russell. I ain't said nothing about Rutherford. I ain't said nothing about all this other stuff with the case. Then you ain't got to. If you really read your Bible, you don't have to. If you pray about it, he will reveal it to you. It's up to you to overlook it because you enjoy the camaraderie. Because you enjoy the people who will cut you off if you make one sin and you have to go tell that brother that you climaxed. And if he decides you didn't have the right attitude, they will cut you off. It's not a game. And I ain't come on here to say it was a game. It's very serious. And frankly, it's making me sick to my stomach of what's really going on. John 6 40 The will of the father Is to believe in the son And this is the will of him who sent me That whoever sees the sons And believes in him May have everlasting life I will raise him up At the last day That's the will of the father Jesus Christ do whatever Jesus Christ told you to do And you're going to be straight It's that simple Stop making the Bible about you The problem with the organization Is they didn't make themselves Somehow spiritual Israel There's still a covenant God has About his original people There's a difference between the Jews And there's a difference between the Gentiles And there are scriptures for the Gentiles And scripture for the Jews Yes, God is Handed it over and, and went over to, to the Gentiles and created his church. But Israel, those the Israelites' is bloodline, going back to the times of Abraham, that's still his people. He's coming back. He's going to redeem his people. You think you're going through this tribulation? That's not for you. It's not. I'm still hurt. Matter of fact, that's why I'm doing this because it's there because I'm starting to get pissed off because I'm just saying this is getting ridiculous. I'm I'm literally like are seeing people that I care about be duped and it's really making me angry so I said I'm gonna talk about it maybe there's somebody out here that'll hear this 
I don't got no format. I don't have a how I'm going to do this. I got on here and I just started talking. So hopefully, you know, you know, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to you like the video, like the video. People who experience this religion, uh, I feel for you. I really do. Some of you then went into other faiths. Some of you don't believe in God at all. Some of you just kind of choose to just like, look, I need to work on myself. I need to, you know, I got to take a break. You know, I get all that. I get it. Because what this religion could do to you is dangerous. So I'm going to end with this and then I'll get into my story. Maybe this will make you come back if I go in and tell you why I believe in Jesus and what made me study these scriptures and really come to that conclusion. Jesus saved my life. I was suicidal because of this religion. I was lost because of this religion. I was angry because of this religion. Nobody, parents, in laws, the brothers at the hall, elders, nobody helped me because they couldn't answer these questions. It will go off into, let me get back to you. Can I get back to you? And then they never come back. Who you been talking to? God, Jesus. He been showing me this through scripture. You guys clearly say on your site, you're not inspired by anything. Where you getting this power and this, and this, and this, all this stuff you put in these magazines and these philosophies and theology from the Bible, where are you getting it from then? If that's the case, nobody could explain it to me. And here I am, was a, I married in, in, at the hall, I got married, I had kids, I left all my old friends who I had grew up with and treated them some kind of way. Now they look at me like I'm crazy because I treated them some kind of way. Didn't invite certain people to my wedding because they was really, look, I'm telling you, my story is deep, but I was suicidal. That I felt like no man or nothing could help me. And the only person that got me thinking differently that has me appreciating my wife more, appreciating my life more is Jesus. That's my testimony. That's it. I wouldn't be here talking to you here today. I wouldn't be talking to you. This would be an empty channel. But anyway, to all the XJWs out here who I feel for you, you know, I, I've heard some horror stories, but um, I'm going to end it there, uh, like I say, um, and also to you witnesses that's still in, that's struggling. You know something ain't right You know something ain't right If you are old Witness who's been in that truth The truth For 45 50, 60 years You didn't expect to be that old You didn't expect to be that old You thought this new system Was gonna be here It's, what's the saddest thing I see Is some of the older witnesses <laughs> had, Don't even know that they've changed things Like you have witnesses that still believe That they they're, that they never even heard of the overlapping generation And none of that stuff They still believe things are the same So uh, I don't know I have a lot to talk about I have a lot that I'm going to talk about on this channel I believe there's some genuinely good people who really are hungry for truth and I feel for them I, I, I pray for them and uh, I hope 
that they can, you know, uh, wake up and come out of this cult. I used to be scared to even think that way. You know, it's a cult. It's not even in the main debate and religion. It's a cult. It's not even, it's like really, really like kind of like something that's just like totally just they make some very bold statements when it comes to the bible you know you can argue with another christian about you know maybe something a little here for salvation or maybe a little something how this happened or you know you have this little debate going on in christianity okay or you know when it comes to the god and the trinity and all these things has the holy spirit has jesus god and has all this stuff yes you have that but with this you can't argue with me and tell me Jesus is an angel. I, you can't do it. It's, cause you, it's not scriptural. You set me up with no grounds for debate. So therefore, you can't even be in a conversation. You're not Joe Winners is like, okay, you if you believe that, more power to you. Go ahead. But a lot of them, probably genuinely good people who was looking for God. Okay, this makes sense. Now you tell me. You know, hell don't exist. All this, all these things, all these things sound good. You know, the millions now will never die. That's what Rutherford said. Uh, that's a great message. Is it biblical though? So, um, so I'm gonna end this video. Hey, if you sit your head through this and you watch the video very appreciative uh i try to do the video in somewhat of a creative way but this is just me this is therapy for me so that's why i'm not gonna argue with nobody i'm not here to you know i'm just trying to help people and let them know what's really going on at least to my benefit i don't know everything i'm not a pastor i'm not a prophet i'm not any of these things i'm just somebody who read and started reading his bible and started praying really and and, and started doing my research and i believe jesus is the key i think he explains the worst thing that could possibly happen to you, which is hell. And he tells you how to get out of it. And I'm a rat with that. So uh, thanks for watching. Life is simple. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks.